Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming on our uh, traditional webinar series. And today we will uh, share with you uh, our experience and information from our uh, project, uh, how we do uh, urban LIDAR and bathymetry surveying for coastal mapping. With my colleague Dmitry, we will introduce you into this project. Okay, so let me briefly uh, refresh our steps, the Padron company steps, uh, how we uh, presented our product. When we started, you, you may observe uh, the, our first PPK kit, uh, but the main events had happened in 2020 and 2022 when we released uh, our first LiDAR and, of course, uh, AquaMapper for bathymetry. So uh, from uh, 2023, we started to implement our Combo solution. What does it mean? It, mean that we, uh, it means that uh, you can use uh, LiDAR for ground and AquaMapper for bathymetry surveying. Uh, here you can observe uh, our product line, uh, it's a camera, RGB and uh, multispectral, our new product PT61, ladders and my uh, aqua mapper as well. I think you, uh, you will know these uh, product lines. Anyways, if you have some questions, you, you may ask it during the session and we will uh, answer it at the, at the end. At the end. As an additional thing, I can uh, mark that uh, the basis for all our equipment is a top drone post processing. Our software works with every sensor, with every payload you may use, with camera, RGB, multispectral, or thermal, with LiDAR solutions, and with the bathymetry. So here is the project which was made in Italy by Adel Corner and Dmitry was an active participant in this project. And uh, I suppose he may <laughs> better in introduce you and dive you into this in, in the project and describe all details and nuances. So it's uh, absolutely fresh product. Uh, we finished it in February and we did it on coastal, Italian coast. Uh, let me let me receive the words to my colleague Dmitry. Please start to explain. Yeah, hi everybody. Hi everybody. Hi guys. Uh, so as my colleague uh, uh, already mentioned, we went to Italy uh, by Del Corvo Beach uh, near the Genova city to perform a whole new level of uh, bathymetry and lighter survey in the coastal waters. Uh, so, as you can see in here, the goal was the comprehensive coastal mapping uh, with the total survey area of 6.82 hectares, which is not so big project for us, but just uh, just as a sample, just as a case study, it was, it was pretty good. And uh, the challenge of this project was that when we uh, came to the uh, seashore, we understood that the waves altitude was uh, like way higher than we expected and way higher that the Chopper Drone team recommends to our clients. But uh, still, we had what we had and we uh, started the uh, survey right away. But just a couple of words about our uh, equipment that we had. Uh, first of all, for sure, it's a Chopper Drone Aqua Mapper. And uh, here you can see some uh, key features of our product. Uh, I will not, uh, it will not take too long. Uh, let's move to the uh, specs of uh, our Aquamapper. Uh, we already, we also call it fish uh, in our team uh, because of because of the design and because of the form of the uh, body. Uh, so it's a single frequency solution, uh, which allows you to measure uh, the bathymetry to uh, achieve the profile of the uh, seabed uh, and use this data for uh, any other projects uh, and designs. Uh, so also we had a lighter 200 plus, which is the most efficient lighter in our line. Um, and uh, uh, we've made a combo survey. So let's move forward to, uh, to Fieldworks. Uh, that's how Dmitry, it goes. Dmitry, let me interrupt for a short moment. Uh, sure. 
colleagues, colleagues, please uh, keep in mind the technical parameters for our aquamapper, because in the near future we will announce the next generation aquamapper with additional features and functionality. Dimitri, please. Sure. Uh, yeah, so let's proceed with the Aquamapper survey preparation. Uh, it was a first. So there is nothing special. Uh, we just assembled the carbon pole, uh, as you can see on the images. Uh, we've uh, connected a couple of cables, such as uh, power supply uh, and the SkyHub connection. And after that, uh, we started to prepare the mission. So that is how it looks like. Uh, the mission was implemented with the speed of two meters per second. Uh, uh, the total flight time was 24 minutes. And um, we also recommend to our clients not to exceed, for example, like 90 or 20 minutes. Uh, but uh, it was a really good flight uh, with the uh, interesting weather with the high waves, but still everything went super cool. And um, the mission, uh, the mission was created by our CDO while while me and my colleague we were assembling the equipment. So it took roughly up to five minutes to uh, prepare everything uh, for the flight. Uh, and uh, please take into account that everything was done directly on site. So we were not preparing anything uh, in the office. And uh, by the way, to tell you the truth, we even didn't uh, know the area where we were going. So, okay, let's move forward and uh, proceed with the lighter survey, lighter preparation. But there is nothing interesting like at all. Uh, because uh, it's even easier. There is nothing to assemble. We just need to uh, plug the lighter to the export. Uh, and um, we have only two cables to connect. It's an antenna cable and the power supply. And that's it. Uh, so when you turn on the drone, the recording starts automatically. So there is uh, even no way to forget to press the record button. So uh, once the drone is on, the record is on. And if you don't need uh, some sort of data, you can cut it uh, at the post-processing step. So that's it, like super easy. Uh, so yeah, regarding the LiDAR mission planning, uh, there is only, only thing that is necessary to remember uh, before, uh, before placing the main survey pattern, you should locate a calibration infinity sign to initialize the IMU. And that's it, uh, there is no, mm, like recalibration of the IMU during the flight, uh, you calibrate it once and you're good to go. Like one kilometer, two kilometer, three kilometer, four kilometer lens, it doesn't matter. Uh, so all of the flights uh, were performed uh, in a fully automatic mode. And as you can see, we made an overlap between our missions in order to have a, a good overlap of the data, of the final data. So the Aquamapper, um, the, the Aquamapper uh, is fully integrated with the DJI PSDK and uh, you can directly um, see the streaming data uh, through the DJI pilot software. And uh, what sort of data we can see in here, like the bathymetry profile, uh, the uh, unit angles during the flight, uh, the speed, and of course, GNSS data, uh, GNSS signal quality. Uh, in order to understand that everything is fine, there is no sort of abrasions or something like that. Uh, and of course, we were monitoring the radar data and the movement of the drone using the UGCS SPIRT software, uh, as it is visible in here on the right, uh, on the picture from the right side. Uh, you can see all of the telemetry, you can see the GPS data, you can see the flight pattern, like everything, and also the altimeter. Uh, so, okay, uh, let's move forward. Uh, the fill works were done, data was achieved, uh, and we could start the processing stage. Uh, we did it uh, in the cafe uh, near the seashore, just just to make, to be sure that all the data is fine, and uh, in case if uh, something went wrong, we had an ability to uh, reflight the mission 
uh, for a lighter survey or for the aqua map or like doesn't matter uh, in the cafe it's there, there also uh, was a possibility to charge the batteries just in case uh, so first uh, we are calculating the raw data for the aqua map and only after that uh, I started to post process the lighter data for the aqua mapper there is nothing special you just need to upload all of the data to the software and press start. Uh, what's the fields? It's the NMEA file, uh, which stands for the um, Aquamapper sensor itself. Uh, the GNSS file, uh, which is from the PPK sensor, uh, not sensor, sorry, the PPK receiver of uh, our device. We also have the drone offsets. Uh, it stands for the uh, GNSS antenna offsets. Uh, between the PPK receiver, the distance between the PPK receiver and the antenna, phase center, uh, and the base station, of course. Uh, the temperature, uh, we're taking this data from the sensor itself. And the last thing, but not least, uh, we need to mention the salinity parameter of the, uh, of the water. Uh, we have the list of the pre, like the pre-installed uh, parameters for almost uh, each uh, sea uh, on our planet and of course we were using the local coordinate system so that's it after that you are pressing the start and you're achieving the data uh, like nothing else nothing else no trajectory nothing just uh, pressing start and you have a have the result so um, after that uh, we are able to generate the G digital elevation model, DEM, uh, with the horizontal contour lines using the interpolation method with the grid size uh, 10 by 10 centimeters. As you can see it here, uh, it's uh, already done. Um, we are using the LiDAR 360 software to perform because uh, uh, the result of the Aquamapper post-processing is the LAS file, which stands for the point cloud. And uh, since we're using the LiDAR 360 for our LiDAR projects, uh, we just decided to make it universal. And uh, we're using the software for Aquamapper and for LiDAR also. So no need to buy any uh, software separate. Uh, so let's move forward and uh, process the LiDAR data first. Uh, uh, not first, sorry. Uh, so... Uh, the first part of the LiDAR data processing is the trajectory generation. We will upload the GNSS file, the IMU file. Uh, we also mentioned the antenna offsets, um, like the distance between the IMU of our LiDAR and uh, the phase center of the uh, GNSS antenna. Uh, and the base station file, that's it. After achieving the trajectory, uh, we are cutting, we're trimming the trajectory file since we don't need the calibration infinity sign. We don't need the part of the road uh, after the takeoff or like uh, to landing. We don't need it. We just need the parallel lines in order to post-process the data properly. Uh, so we are able to trim, uh, trim it in our top of post-processing as well as uh, perform the uh, strip alignment uh, also. And uh, after that, we uh, were using the local coordinate system. Uh, we're picking it up from the pre-installed list uh, of projections. And we are ready uh, to generate the point cloud. As you can see here, we can also uh, monitor the process of uh, point cloud generation in a preview window, which is like also very uh, comfortable. Uh, it allows you to understand if something went wrong, for example, uh, or everything is fine. Uh, okay, so we are uh, receiving the point cloud from the LiDAR. Uh, it is already strip aligned and even uh, like adjusted in the LiDAR 360. Um, and um, the noise point, points are already removed. And it's pretty good looking, like in my opinion. <laughs> so let's check the profile view and thickness of the coin cloud as it is vis visible here on the uh, right screenshot. Uh, the thickness of the coin cloud is uh, 40, uh, uh, four centimeters. 
uh, everything is visible. We have the ground data under the trees uh, and the cloud itself looks pretty good without any outliers. So it's nice. So finally, we can provide uh, the combined bathymetry and LiDAR data and that's it. Uh, we have the LiDAR data uh, from the left side and we have uh, uh, on this screenshot, uh, it's a horizontal lines, but also we have uh, the data with the raster. Uh, it's DM from uh, from the Aquamapper uh, in a TIFF format uh, combined with the LiDAR data, but we can go further and uh, we can give you the interpolated bathymetry data uh, as a point cloud after raster to point conversion. So, so we can combine uh, combine the ground layer from both their serving entities. So that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. And Alex, I'm giving you uh, back the word. Okay, uh, may I kindly ask you to uh, to switch to <clears throat> to the slide uh before uh guys are sitting uh sitting in cafe it's uh 12 or 13 slide slide number 12 or 13. this one no uh before oh okay one before and one one more uh yeah uh, no that's it uh so uh, I would like that uh, you uh, you pay attention uh, on the remote controller. Uh, here is the real time data from the Aquamapper. It's a demonstration of fully integration with the DJI drone. So during your mission, you may observe the real parameters. From your measurement, and right now I see that uh, there are some questions uh, I appeared, and we have to answer on it. Mitchell, sure. Can... So I will I will stop the uh, sharing of my screen, so it would be mm -hmm. like more comfortable for me. Okay, 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 okay. Let's let's proceed with the questions. Um, okay, Chris. Uh, yes, we have examples uh, with the subsurface structures. Uh, if uh, like uh, I believe that the meaning is, um, have we seen anything under the water, and uh, is it possible for us to share it? For example, surely, and we will uh, we will share it uh, on our topdrone.com uh, website in a section of the Aquamapper because. Uh, uh, one of the tests which were performed on uh, Geneva Lake in Switzerland, uh, we uh, it was not inspection; it was just a test. But we found out the big, uh, I think the like two two meters in diameter, huge uh, pipeline. So uh, I hope and I'm pretty sure, like ninety nine percent, that my CDO still has that data, and uh, we will share it. Uh, if, uh, by the way, if you would like to achieve the um, sample data, please um, write a letter to info at topdrone dot com, and uh, we will send the samples. Like no worries. We will send the samples from different projects. So. Yeah, sure. It's not sure. Okay, what is the vertical and horizontal uncertainty for the aquamapper data? Uh, the the accuracy of the sensor itself is from 0 0.2 to 0 0.4, uh, like the sensor itself. And uh, the accuracy of the GNSS data is uh, still 3 to 5 centimeters as all of the um, uh, topotron equipment. Uh, the question about uh, uh, manage uh, uh, fluctu sorry? fluctuation in in, wa in wave heights as a factor of noise. Do you, do you know fluctuation in a wave heights as a factor of noise? Uh, I 
to tell you the truth, I didn't get this question completely. Uh, there's a place like the world to measure to. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, the the last the last question uh, regarding the safety system. Um, at this point, uh, we didn't have uh, that sort of safety system, but in the next generation of the Aquamapper, uh, which would be released, uh, like, I don't know, really, really shortly, we have the quick release system, uh, which will allow to uh, disconnect the drone and the Aquamapper uh, to save the drone and to uh, take out the Aquamapper later, since uh, the water is not a problem for that unit. And also, I, I see the question regarding the um, velocity of the, uh, I believe, velocity of the unit uh, to 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 manage the speed of the unit itself. We are using uh, the UGCS mission planning software uh, to to manage the the speed of the Aquamapper, like during the mission plan. Next. Couple of addition about uh, quick release system. Uh, we, we we did a test in different conditions, and uh, even uh, we block uh, by ourselves the sensor to realize what will happen during your mission. And uh, you know that uh, DJI drones and many other producers drones have uh, its own uh, safety system. So if Aquamapper stuck in something, uh, by the way, we didn't have such uh, incidents during uh, during all the time. And the drone start uh, started to fight for its own life, and we'll keep the same height and we'll keep the same uh, uh, place. So uh, observing on your remote, you you can handle. The control uh, by yourself and, and uh, trying to release the aquamapper. So, uh, but for now, uh, as I said uh, a bit late, uh, a bit early, no accident had happened. Regarding the um, the lighter and the uh, depths of the measurements of the aquamapper, uh, so the maximum depths. Uh, for the measurements uh, is the up to 100 meters and the operational altitude of the ladder 200 plus is 120 meters single beam uh, single beam max depth 100 meters yeah uh yes uh, regarding the question regarding the corrections yes we're doing the, the corrections according uh to the data uh, which we achieved during the field works and the corrections we're doing it uh, during the post processing in the Aquamapper software. How does it work in a reverse with cross current? Okay, uh, it will work uh, in a reverse with the cross current uh, because um, the uh, the level of uh, like the the uh, the the angle. Uh, the uh, how to <laughs> formulate my uh, my mind uh, to answer this question. Um, uh, there is no uh, there is no big angle uh, for the cross for this axis, so uh, it would be mm, in the in a range I believe uh, of seven degrees approximately. Uh, so. It will not go left or right, uh, and uh, it, it would work normally. It is also possible to use regarding the GPS reference data. Yes, it's possible to use uh, not only your own base station, which would be uh, placed on the uh, on the area, uh, but you can use the core system uh, of your country to download the virtual Linux. Uh, to download the ranks file and uh, the main uh, the main thing that uh, we do not recommend to use the data uh, downloaded from the reference base station located in more than 10 kilometers from your uh, site because the the accuracy uh, would be much worse so 
uh, generally we recommend to place your own base station, but if you do not have uh, uh, the ability or you do not have like the base station at all, uh, yes, it's possible. Uh, you can upload to Aqua Mapper Processing uh, virtual Linux data, which is like observation file, OBS, or 24.0, 22.0, and whatever, and it will work, yeah. Uh, the drone flies in fixed RTK fixed mode. No, uh, the drone flies, uh, th there is no RTK during the flight. We are not working in the RTK. We are working only in PPK, uh, which stands for the post-processing kinematic, which means that we record, we are recording data during the uh, field works and uh, post-processing it in the office or after that. It gives us a bit of flexibility uh, because, for example, if... Um, if you had problems with your base station, it's possible to download the virtual Linux. Uh, and it's also possible to work uh, in the areas with no GSM coverage, for example, because uh, I had um, such experience uh, in the mountains. And uh, when, uh, when you have no GSM, it's impossible to use the RTK. There is no uh, RTK corrections. Uh, so, uh, but, but the PPK system, uh, gives you uh, an opportunity to uh, finalize the project. Number of points per second, Dmitry. Can we? Uh, number of points per second. Um, regarding the. Uh, uh, can you can you please specify your question? Number of points from the lighter or from the uh, aqua because from the ladder we have uh, three reflection and uh, on third reflection the maximum amount of point is one million um, nine hundred and twenty thousand point uh, per second uh, so um, regarding the aqua mapper you will achieve uh, approximately one uh, one point per second so uh, that's just the echo sounder uh, there, there, there won't be like uh, the the equal amount of points as a lighter because like the technology is completely different. Um, does PPK allow you uh, for accurate server lines? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because we are using the, uh, okay, uh, the PPK technology stands for the uh, post-processing kinematic. And um, uh, how how shall we perform the project in PPK? We, the, the main, one of the, one of the important the most important things in a PPK is the uh, the base station. Uh, when the base station is uh, recording the Rhinox, it means that uh, it is in the static mode, static recording, right? Uh, the base station shall be uh, placed on the high precision known coordinates. Uh, so. In this regard, you will achieve the high accuracy data. Otherwise, uh, if you will use your base station uh, without high precision coordinates of it, uh, the inner accuracy of the system, it would be okay, but the uh, the absolute accuracy would be incorrect. So uh, if you are doing everything right, Sure, you will have a good accuracy and high precision. If not, so yeah. Uh, the multi beam sensor on your system, you know the multi beam. Uh, yes, it's um, the development of uh, that sort of device is also uh, ongoing. But to tell you the truth, single beam and dual frequency are much uh, much smaller and uh, probably a bit easier to use. Uh, Meanwhile, it's the multi beam solution would be bigger, but uh, I think uh, Alex will not allow it's, me to write. Like, like, yes, uh, it's slightly uh, it's slightly different games with the multi beam solution. So uh, with the price, you jump to another league. And if you are ready to discuss uh, this uh, sensor, please welcome. Uh, write an email, and we will uh, show you. All the details and nuances, because uh, it's a different way, it's a different form factor, and uh, it means that you have to change your carrier as well. So there are many additional requests from uh, for you, but we are uh, uh, we are ready to discuss it.
Yeah. Uh, so what's the usual drone height above water line during the aquamaperic sound or operation? Okay. Uh, the usual altitude above the uh, water line is two meters. Uh, it is being controlled by the radar, by, by the altimeter, and uh, uh, the streaming data goes uh, to the sky hub and uh, the whole system controls itself. So, um, for example, uh, we had a situation uh, with this exact project uh, when the drone was going uh, to the highways and uh, suddenly it jumped uh, on the top of this wave because the radar data uh, was taken into account and immediately uh, the drone uh, increased the altitude. Uh, is the tethering lens fixed? Okay, we uh, we can we can mm, provide the device with the uh, three meters pole, for example, and uh, we had that uh, type of equipment. We saw one at one effort with the three meter uh, lens pole, and uh, it works fine. No problem with that. Yeah, it's possible. Why not? It depends on customer requests. Some of our customers ask for longer poles. Um, okay. The system uh, is operating under the water. It is 20 centimeters under the water. Uh, that's the only way uh, the echo sounder works properly because uh, if you will place the echo sounder on the water line, uh, the data would be improper. That's it. Uh, you will achieve the data, uh, but you will have the gaps, uh, and uh, most likely uh, the the aquamapper would be jumping out of the water sometimes, and you will achieve no data uh, in that case. So yes, it works uh, under the water completely. In the Middle East, <clears throat> in the Middle East, uh, uh, to be to be honest with you, I. <laughs> I don't know where our customers uh, re uh, did and uh, do their project. I believe so, because uh, when we announced uh, our uh, product, our Aquamapper product, uh, first of all, we were uh, we became a finalist of exponential challenge, and uh, immediately our solution uh, was bought from every con continent. So <laughs> I suppose yes. Probably. Okay, so uh, I suppose it's time to finish our presentation. We will combine all the information and put on the internet. So if you have an additional questions, feel free to write us an email and we will provide all the information for you about measurements, about projects, etc., etc., etc. Yep, yep. Uh, you know our website, you know our post, uh, like email, uh, so feel free. Uh, we're waiting for additional questions from your side, guys. And uh, thanks for the interest to our products.